Preparations are complete. The Spirit Shard is prepared, thanks to the skills of our newest Lotus Acolyte. Uh, and my efforts to accelerate his training. Shut up, Gong. Your contribution has been noted. Now, we must complete the ritual. A score of clay golems stand idle without a focus. This jade golem will awaken them all, direct them as one. Insert the spirit shard. Let this legion of immortals give glory to our masters. What? What is wrong? I command you. I demand that you obey. What is the meaning of this? Who has corrupted this Jade Golem? It is linked to a legion of warriors that now run mad. The Foundation will crumble. Who are... you? Wait. I can sense it on you. You are the one. You carry the other pieces of the amulet. I... I am so sorry, Grand Inquisitor Gia. It is my new acolyte. There was some kind of mistake. Fool! So blinded by petty schemes that you cannot see a threat in our midst, you are worthless. And you, hidden in plain sight like your master, you caught us unsuspecting but not unprepared. Who are you to think you could enter our lair so easily? You lay claim to a powerful lineage. Indeed, you seem to have correctly named your enemy, despite the more obvious target of Death's Hand. That is why Death's Hand stands at the forefront of the Assassins. He draws attention, diverts criticism, while the Emperor solidifies his power. You are like every other simpering peasant that has graced our dungeons. What did any of them contribute to the glory of our age before the Emperor dared to make something of them? That is the beauty of what Sun Hai has done. He has taken the raw material of the Empire and extracted something useful. <laughs> For every magistrate that objects, or peasant that asks questions, another golem is forged. An army undying. But through all this, a threat remained. A traitorous sibling and a hidden protege. We did not know a face or a name, but we knew what they would need. The amulet. Its pieces spread like petals to the wind. You have caught a few, but you are far from your peak, and not every golem was linked to this corrupted husk. Goodbye, spirit monk. I will inform Death's Hand of your past. So we got a bit of a rough fight here. Well, we gotta take out Gong, who uses dual axes along with two golems. And these are big golems, and they're hit really hard. Also, there's that other guy. He's not really a big deal. And look at how much damage that just did. That's, that's pretty much. Gotta take those golems out really fast, because they will cut you down pretty quick if you're dumb like I am and don't ever block at all. Also, we gotta take her out of support. That's just not doing any good here. We need two people with swords in this fight. We finally got to Gia. Gotta get through this fight first to get to her. And finally that's Sand himself. The first golem went down pretty quick. This one's not, not going down as fast. Weird thing about golems, they have 
strange amounts of health. So of course Gong also uses the poison hand style. It's better than his dual axes, those really do a bunch of damage. So does this though, Gong's actually pretty tough. Save interrupted the items there. We actually lost the spirit shard, but we got the ability to turn into a golem. So there's that. Also, there's this scroll stand. Reading it should get us a hidden book set and a new technique. It was not the art of war, that was the text of war. The different book. Let's see what that gem does. I think I've already found one at some point, have I? Hmm. Oh, uh, maybe. We have to find Gia and kill her before she brings Death's hand. Oh, I just wanted to smash Gia's favorite jar first. You are strong, but you do not know real power. Our strength lies in preparation. We have warriors across the Empire and other Jade Golems that are not corrupted. You have diminished us, but it is not a mortal wound. Death's Hand will be here soon. You will be my gift to him, drawn as you were by your precious amulet. Live or die, the will of the Emperor be done. So for all the build-up of Gia, she's actually not that hard to fight. It is just like, well, two-on-one, which isn't really fair. But she uses Tempest, she also has a sword. She does kind of a lot of damage with the sword, but it's pretty easy to make her stop doing things in Tempest if you just hit her a lot. So Tempest is kind of, kind of weak style, damage-wise, though it's not really that much of a worry. Oh, here comes the sword. This thing hurts. And if we just stay on her... Look how much damage it did, God. If we just stay on her, it's not really... a threat. There's no time to stop and talk. We must escape this place before it becomes our tomb. Oh, so... Zoo. Oh. Well, we got... We have completed the amulet, but... Oh. But Zoo... So, we got... This gem. It's, it's the Heaven's Blessing, but it's for closed fist people. 
So that's a neat thing to find. So we just got this scholar's gem. But we have completed the amulet, so now we have two more slots for a total of seven. I just want to fill those with something. I got time. So what if the building is collapsing? I mean, I, you know... Look, Ming is really fast about swapping these gems out. It may seem like I'm just taking through your money, but he is really quickly just throwing them in there and getting moving. I feel terrible for the poor soul who took over my last position. <laughs> Sorry about your buddy getting crushed by rocks. So let's put the lightning gem in there. 100% chance to evade traps. I think that's pretty nice. Do have to clean up some more assassins on the way out of here. And since I am just fighting some assassins, which I think I've done a lot of, I'm just gonna talk about something else for a little bit. Also, I can't roll for some reason. Hopefully that'll get fixed soon. But I know Jade Empire, on the surface, probably doesn't seem as interesting of a Bioware game as something like KOTOR, or especially KOTOR 2. Which wasn't actually made by Bioware, but... That's because Jade Empire is kind of paced differently. It sort of takes its time in the first parts of the game. It's not really until here, where everything kind of ramps up, and then the end game, which is excellent in my opinion Jade Empire, begins. That's where all the really exciting and awesome things are in this game. It makes you wait for it, but when you get there, it's pretty great, and I really enjoy it. Because... Here in Chapter 3, this is the final regular chapter in the game. The last four chapters are all, in my opinion, the end game. And once we get there, I think it's going to be quite good. I think this game has a great final act in it. To replenish my stats here, I am not doing too hot and focused. Can't use my weapons at all right now. We can still do this. We can always do this. As long as Silfox doesn't push the guy out of the way. You ruined everything, Silfox. I hope you're happy. I could have covered us both in gore, but... That dream will go unfulfilled for this video. I can't blow anybody up right now. I don't know why Ming grunted. He didn't actually take any damage from that. Well, whatever. We have pretty much destroyed this entire place. It means that those assassins are going to be crippled in the Empire now. Of course, any assassins that were not inside of the fortress will still be alright. But they should be a bit more disorganized with the command structure being wiped out. Jia dead. Shin gong. All the bigwigs are gone, so that's something, at least. I'm not sure if these golems are corrupted or not, but they will try to kill you. They probably are corrupted. We're at the exit. No sign of the Watcher, though. you think he'd be around? Maybe he got out. He was right here, but the door is blocked, so we have to go this way instead. A lowly acolyte walks away. You should have died beside your master, preventing the escape of whoever did this. Unless you had a role in it. Destroy them to be sure. So one final fight against the assassins with the Watcher leading them. The Watcher isn't that bad, actually. Oh, Thousand Cuts. Oh, how about that? You guys are using Thousand Cuts. Oh. Well, the Watcher is a problem when he does this. Because this can stunlock you pretty effectively. Yeah. That's Tempest. It's kind of a pain in the ass when it's used right. I wonder why Gia didn't use it this way. Yeah, you've got to die now. You've got to die immediately. I need to stab you in the face a dozen times until you are dead. Okay, good. Did it really take Silk Fox all that time to not even kill one guy? Silk Fox, come on. 
You can do better than that. We have to get out of the necropolis so we can deal with this information. Be careful, the ground is shifted. There's no telling what has been just. And hear her audio cut there. I didn't do that. I, I didn't actually do that. I, I really didn't. That just happens sometimes. So that was that mysterious door in this unfinished tomb. It was a secret passage out of the Lotus Assassin Fortress that we didn't actually know about. But now we just have to get through the necropolis and get back to camp. And because the ground has shifted, there's lots of more enemies to fight on the way out of here. Ah, oh, lost spirits. And just about enough of these guys. We're not done seeing them though, but... You know, a guy can hope, right? I wonder what it is about the party member's weapons that allows them to attack ghosts. You'd think that your character, with their legendary weapons, could attack ghosts with them. Because really, every weapon that you get has some kind of elaborate backstory to it. You'd think that would be able to hurt ghosts. Because the party members don't seem to have elaborate weapons. They just have just regular weapons, and they're just fine. A little strange. Take out the Lost Spirits first. They can hit at a range like the mummies, so... Seems like a good idea, right? I hate that they do that. They kind of move back when you hit them. Make them just a little more annoying to attack. Oh, so Fox is disease. Perhaps we should reconsider that threesome. It may not be the best call now. Well, she needs to get some shots first. I mean, that's just... I mean, come on now. At the very least, these spirits aren't doing that really loud noise when they spook you into combat. See, they're not doing that. They just appear now. That's better. It doesn't blow your ears out whenever they show up, and that's nice. a little bit further. I think there might be one more fight with some spirits. Let's see. Make sure I go the right way. That's not the right way. This is the right way towards Shen's place. Oh. These aren't spirits. They're mummies. Oh, I was wrong about that then. Mummies aren't that bad, because you can actually stab mummies. That explosion of goo is probably not a good thing. You should, you should probably, yeah, you should probably take a bath, Ming. I'm just saying, hey, you're not wearing a shirt. So, you're, you're covered in gross. You're covered in gross right now. You should really do something about that. No sign of Shen. I guess I can understand that. The whole place is sort of exploding with spirits everywhere, so... I guess it makes sense that he's out of here. But I mean, he did leave earlier, so maybe he just hasn't come back yet. We can escape the necropolis now and get back to camp automatically. We don't have to go through the city at all. Which is pretty nice. I don't like what we have seen here. We must return to your flyer so everyone can discuss what we have learned. So, your lost sheep, Sagacious Zoo, returned to save you. I didn't think he had the nerve. That's because people are nothing but tools to you. My dear little Dawnstar, I'm a princess. People bow to me. That is the way things are. Of course, many things are not as I thought they were, if what we learn from Gia is true. I do not mean to diminish his sacrifice, but the concerns of the living take precedence. Too much is at stake. When this is over, I swear that he shall have a grand funeral. Death's hand will be in the grave next to him. And my father... My father will answer all our questions.
I know what you found and what the implications of it are. The Emperor himself ordered the golems constructed, and the workers were stolen from their homes. By the Water Dragon's mercy, they are enslaved until they die, and then trapped within the golems. I have seen the proof. But how can it be true? He has taken our master, killed our friends. What if assaulting the Water Dragon is true, too? He must be stopped! No! I will not believe it! We have to go to the palace and give him the chance to explain! You will see, this is trickery from Death's Hand, or someone else. Layers upon layers, as if this wasn't complicated enough! Now you are really stepping beyond the realm of reason. Why would Zhu know this? Only partially, it would seem, or they would both be alive. Does this change anything? We can tell Master Li and give him hope, but we must rescue him first. Then let's quit talking and go to the palace. I will lead the way. I have grave concerns about this. Please talk to me before we leave for the palace. I worry for you if the princess cannot see the danger. She says she can get my marvelous dragonfly there in one piece. I've heard no other options, and I won't risk the finish flying blind. Everyone be quiet! Are you ready to go? If you have business left in the Imperial City, you'd better finish it. I won't be leaving the palace without an answer. I thank you, but this has been a great deal to absorb. I don't know what to think about anything. We still have much to talk about, but it will have to wait. I must speak to my father. Forgive me. You would delay us for a chat with your precious country girl? Pat her head and get back soon. I want answers, and there's only one place left to get them. So Silk Fox is eager to continue, of course she is though. Considering what we found. But chapter 4 is basically the point of no return. So we do want to finish some things up here before we do that, like talking to Dawnstar. And some unfinished business with Kang, but... Hurry to the palace. I hate it that Master Li is trapped there. Who knows what the Emperor is doing with him? My father will explain. Death's hand is behind this. You will see. But we do want to talk to Dawnstar first. It is just about time, isn't it? The Emperor or Death's hand or whoever can only keep us from our master for so long. So much has happened to get us here. Our hard work. The loss of Sagacious Zoo. I'm looking forward to having our questions answered. I also don't want to worry about you anymore. What if you were next to fall? I think I trust you now, but I am not sure what should come next. This seems like such an uncertain time to be making plans for the future. I feel selfish for trying to find peace while this war of ours continues. If, when we free Master Li, that will be the more appropriate time for this. I doubt you need any more incentive, but I am glad I have that effect. Now it is just up to the princess to keep her word. And we can end this. Everything will be all right again. I know it. All right. What did you want to ask? Don't go too far. I'd get lost in this city. I know it. 